Welcome to Faith with Flavor, the place to be to season and encourage your faith. I'm your host, Donna Clayton. The new year is among us, and with that comes a time of reflection that can either make or break your goals. For some of us, the new year drives us to accomplish new goals and set new milestones. And for others, it creates an overwhelming pressure that can lead you to feeling unfulfilled or uninspired. The important thing to remember is that none of our feelings phase God. In fact, today you will listen to my Candid Confessions panel speak candidly on how they got through 2017, and they will even share some tips on how to make the most out of your new year. But first, I believe with all my heart that another key to your success has a lot to do with the words you are speaking. And in my latest vlog, I teach you why speaking life is the only way to live. Watch this. What's up guys? Thank you so much for tuning into Faith with Flavor. I'm so excited that you're here. And today I have a very special vlog for you. We are talking about speaking life into your circumstances. You know, I believe that speaking life is the only way to live because the Word of God backs it up. The Word of God is our blueprint. It lets us know what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong. And one of the main things that the Word of God talks about is speaking life over your circumstances to open up that airway, to open up that 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 stream of blessing that God wants to give all of His children. So if you want to learn what the Word of God says about speaking life over your circumstances, please keep watching. Okay, the first point I want to make is that life and death are in the power of your tongue. And the scripture that I want to look at for this is found in Proverbs 18.21. And I'm reading from the King James Version. The Word of God reads like this. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So real clearly, God is telling us, you know, that we have the power of life and death. You know, you're either speaking blessing over your life or you're speaking curses, or you're speaking death, you know? And of course, we all want to live that blessed life, or at least I hope you, you do. Maybe if you're tuning into this vlog, I know you do, because you want to live a blessed life. I know I do. And so it's very important that whatever we're saying, whatever we're speaking is lining up with what the Word says about us, you know? You want to speak life into your circumstances. You want to believe God for the impossible. You know, this is going to affect your mental well-being, your physical well-being, your emotional well-being, and of course, your spiritual well-being. So speak life. Point number two, when you speak life, nothing will be impossible for you. And the scripture that I want to look at for this is found in Matthew 17, 20. He said to them, because of your little faith, for truly I say to you, if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. Now the key word that I want us to look at right now is when he says you will say. Jesus himself said, you will say. So basically, faith accompanies words. And so if you are saying things and believing them and co confessing them by faith, nothing is gonna be impossible for you, you know? All that God wants is that we have faith to believe in him for the impossible. He wants us to believe in him for the impossible. Nothing is too hard or impossible for our God. So he's looking at us like, hello, believe in me, believe that I can do it because you know what? I own everything, I'm in charge of everything. So if you believe, your faith will do it for you. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. Point number three, what you confess will be established. You know, Job 22:28, and this is also from the English Standard Version, reads like this. You will decide on a matter and it will be established for you and light will shine on your ways. I love this scripture because it's talking about deciding. When we decide that we're gonna speak blessing over our lives, then it will be established. You know, our faith will accompany our words, which will accompany our actions. And see, they all line up together, but what you're speaking is so important because 
You have to meditate on lovely and pure things. You have to believe that God is gonna do it for you if it is something that's a blessing because we know that all good things come from God, right? So you wanna be speaking those positive things, those good things over your life, over your circumstances, over your family. You know, I can't tell you how many times I go around my house and I just speak blessing over myself, over my husband, over my dogs because I love them so much. You know, you wanna start doing that. You wanna speak blessing over it because guess what? It will be established for you. And last but not least, the final point that I want to make about why speaking life is the only way you should live is God spoke everything into existence. You know, Psalm 33, nine tells us, for he spoke it and it came to be. He commanded and it stood firm. If God himself, the creator of the universe, the creator of us, spoke it into existence, how much more do we as his creation need to be speaking things into existence? I hope and pray that this vlog has helped you and inspired you to speak life over your circumstances because really speaking life is the only way to live. It's the only way that you're truly going to see the hand of God move in your circumstances and in your life. If you would like more information about me or my vlogs, you can check out lifewithdonna.com and don't forget to subscribe to my email list to stay connected with me. And now let's meet our panelists for today. Ladies, welcome. Hey. Hi. <laughs> I'm so excited that you guys are here. We have a few newbies. One newbie. Yes, I'm the newbie, right? Yes. Yes. So I'm Brittany Salisbury. Um, many of you might have seen Donna. She came to our church last month, about two months ago, right? And she interviewed um, ex Satanist John Ramirez. And it was really, really cool. So um, yeah, so uh, a little bit about me. We all, you know, a lot of us women we wear many hats, right? Mm -hmm. So. I oversee a lot of different things at our church, our social media department, our radio department, our international department. Oh my gosh, there's so much in front of the scenes, behind the scenes. And then I have a Christian clothing line called Fearless Attire. And it's all based on 2 Timothy 1.7, which you guys probably know, right? For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. So Amazing. that's me. I love that. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for sharing, Brittany. Yeah. And we have another Brittany with us. The other Brittany. Yes. My name is Brittany Dallamora, and I also wear a lot of hats. I am a real estate agent. My husband and I are the directors of our young adult ministry at our church, Cornerstone Church of San Diego. I have an amazing ministry called Always Love that helps mm. pull women out of the sex industry, of course, if they want out. Mm -hmm. um, and I am now an author. I just finished my first book and I'm working Woo! on my second book. Congratulations. Cool. 2018 is going to be great. Yeah. yeah. Amen. I'm so excited to get into that. And over here we have. Hey, my name is Asia Walker. I am the founder of Through and Through Ministries, which is a healing and restoration ministry. And then I'm also a fashion model. Hey, hey. Yeah. You look like one too. Uh, <laughs> we wear so many hats, all of us. Yeah. Yes, and I'm Ali Joy, and I started a ministry called She Is, and it's a women's empowerment ministry, just really encouraging women to be their authentic selves. And I also am an evangelist and I travel and preach the gospel. So Amazing. it's a fun life. <laughs> so exciting. Yes. And I love what you said about being authentic because that's mm. why I created Candid Confessions mm. is so that we can really just talk mm. about issues and real life things that we go through as women candidly yeah. and with authenticity behind it. And today our topic is all about New Year's resolutions, guys. And I wanna know from you guys, ladies, what do you guys do in the beginning of the year to have a successful year? What do you do, Brittany? So my husband and I, we start writing out our goals at the end of every year so that we're prepared going into the next year. Mm -hmm. um, so we've already written out our list of goals so that when you start off 2018, like you're already a step ahead of the game because you know what you're fighting for. Mm -hmm. um, so we get to work in the beginning of the year uh, to conquer the goals that we've set the year before. Very That's good, awesome. That's love cool. it. Um, so for me, um, a lot of people do this too, but I start off with a fast. So um, I used to do a Daniel fast, but I was seeing that I was getting more breakthrough when I did a water fast. Wow. So I'll do a 21 day water fast, which is very intense. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. um, I mean, I, I get to like a little, 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 um, little girl, <laughs> little Latina girl. Wow. Um, but um, no, it's really, really amazing because um, the Lord really just shows me so much about what's coming ahead. As you guys probably know from fasting, mm. um, you hear the Lord clear. 
um, you know, I'm drenching myself in the word and I'm asking the Lord for wisdom and strategy and like, Lord, you know, I need you to guide my footsteps and give me wisdom. Mm -hmm. And also through that fast, I can see he starts purging stuff from me, you know, wow. and he's always trying to purge something that is in me that is not of God. And so I feel like I start off fresh with like a clean slate, you know, yeah. and just really pursuing the Lord, um, you know, through that fast. So it's really powerful for me. Mm -hmm. I love that. Actually, you took mine because that's my really? <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so I, I go on a fast in the beginning of the year. I'm not as intense as you. I don't do a, a water fast, but I do do a Daniel fast. And I just really believe in giving God your first fruit, Amen. you know, and mm. just That's putting right. him at the center of your life by giving yeah. him those first few weeks, you yeah. know, of the year to just really focus on him. And in that, you know, he's revealing things to you, yeah. revealing mm -hmm. goals that he might have for you for that coming year. And so I make sure to journal and write everything down and, you know, just like you too, like putting it all together yeah. so that you mm -hmm. can have a fruitful year. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So That's terrific. Amen. I love everything you guys said um, because I do those things. One of the things that I also do is I declutter. Uh, I love the verse that mm -hmm. says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all, all its righteousness. <laughs> righteousness. <laughs> all of this is righteousness and everything else will be added unto you. So the first thing I do is seek Him and yeah. the first thing is for word. Mm -hmm. I ask God, what is my word for this year? Mm -hmm. And so the year that He said, this is going to be a push through year was one of my mm -hmm. hardest years. And this year, wow. God had said for the year 2017 that it was a year of restoration. So knowing what season you're in now, what season you're coming out of, and yeah. what season you're headed into. So I think it's so prominent in knowing what season you're in yeah. and what you're walking into the following yeah. year. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Exactly. I, I asked the Lord for a word as well, and more a scripture that will ground me throughout the year. So this past year it was Isaiah 40, 31, but those who wait upon the Lord mm -hmm. will mount up on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. <laughs> and so I, the, the Lord gave me that word sore and I was just like, okay, God, I've, I'm going to trust you at your word this year. So that was just kind of my... I love that. Yeah. I love that Actually, word. that that's one too that I do. But mine, you have like two words, right? Push through. It was, yes. Mm. So mine is one word and it can only be one word because then it just, it overwhelms me almost. <laughs> <laughs> so my word for 2017 was innovation. And mm. I believe that this year, gosh, God has done so much and just taking me to like new things and new ideas and cultivating things that I already had. And so mm -hmm. it, it does, it like sets the tone for the year of what to expect, like what is God gonna yeah. do? Cause God mm -hmm. is always up to something, right? Yes, yes, amen. But I wanna know what are your new year's resolutions? I know you guys have some, so tell us right now, what are they? <laughs> uh, right now. So I, I mean, I set goals. I don't know if that's the same with resolutions, but the goals that we have, my husband and I, we set them together. We have our business goals. So for me, I want to get even more involved hosting open houses for real estate. Um, I want to finish my autobiography that I just started uh, two days ago. Um, so that's some of the goals that we have. Maybe a, a bun in the oven at the end. Oh, of the yeah. That's a goal. So hopefully we get that one. Aww. With God, all things are possible. Hey, come on, girl. Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay, Donna, so mine are a little different. So I want to say a couple of things why they're different this year. Mm -hmm. um, for me, the Lord's really showing me that we are in a significant time in history. So before my, my New Year's resolutions just look different, and I realized that all of them are just Christ centered, kingdom focused. So, you know, with biblical prophecy being fulfilled left and right. You know, we're seeing signs in the heavens, blood red moons, you know, coming. Uh, Trump just named, you know, Jerusalem as internal capital of, of Israel. So there's so many things that are happening. And it's like the Lord saying, get ready, get prepared, because mm -hmm. the harvest is coming. A, a huge move of Amen. God is coming. And yes. so yes. I know that as believers, we're supposed to be used on the front lines, you know. And mm -hmm. so I just want to be prepared for that. And so I'm drenching myself in the word and, you know, praying and fasting and, mm -hmm. you know, worship privately, corporately. But I realized that um, what the Lord's telling me for this season, for this year, because of so many things that are happening in our world, that it has to be on a higher level. So if I'm praying one day uh, for an hour, I need to be praying two hours. So it's like stepping up every element of praying and fasting, you know, fasting weekly now, like maybe twice a week, you know. And so, um, you know, the Lord's really showing me I need to purge my soul, clean wow. my soul, you know, so we have clean thoughts, clean, you know, actions yeah, and yeah. A behavior. And that's just something that I'm really seeking is really to be pure before the Lord. I love that so much. Oh, and for me, this new year, it lines up with 
almost like the beginning of my ministry, even though our, my ministry has already begun. But a year ago, I got baptized in the Jordan River. Wow. And it was so amazing because to me, it was very symbolic. You know, Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River oh and it was right before the launch of his ministry. And I felt like God was doing that for me almost. And I love ministering to women. That's my heart. And so I'm really hoping and I'm actually believing God that 2018 is going to be filled with lots of opportunities for me to really preach the word of God to his women, you know, because there's so much restoration needed out there. Like you said, the harvest is ready, Mm -hmm. ready to receive what the women of God have to say, you know, so that's one of my New Year's resolutions among others. But what about you? What I do is I look at it as four pillars. So I always do my resolutions as in career, as in spiritually, as in relationally, Mm -hmm. and even education or depending on where I am at that moment. And so right now, I would love to open my two businesses next year. So that's Ooh, a little secret that we yes, don't girl. know. Um, <laughs> got it. Um, then also spiritually. Thank you so much. Spiritually, one of the things I've done for years is a couple years ago, I told God, I want to walk in love. The following year, wow. I told him, I want to become love. And this year, mm-hmm. I feel like I want to be a distributor of love. Wow, yeah. I love so that. Good. Very so good. good. Okay, ditto to that. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm adding that one to the list. <laughs> yeah, too. <laughs> but I, um, th- so actually, just about a month ago, I started writing my first book. Oh, and I'm Woo! So excited. Yay. And so my goal for 2018 is to finish that book yep. and to get it published. Yep. And start getting it out there yeah. and um i will let you in a little secret it's called the joyful warrior yeah. wow. and it's on ephesians 6 and putting on the armor of god and declaring so that over yourself so it'll be for women and yeah I love it. It. so so, so powerful Thank you. Thank you. now how do you make sure that like throughout the year that you don't get you know sometimes we get sidetracked by things that hit us maybe it's an attack maybe mm. it's something that happens in our lives it can throw us off course and you you kind of have to go back to your goals to be purposeful yeah. and fulfilling them. How do you do that? Yeah. How do you do that? So what I do is my husband and I, we hold each other accountable. Mm-hmm. Um, we also stay in prayer. Like we pray every day. Like we don't go a, a day without communicating with our father. So he mm-hmm. continues to remind us of our goals, reminds us of what we're fighting for. Um, and I just believe, you know, if you want stability, you have to have accountability. So we are on each other like hawks, mm-hmm. like love, how are you doing with this goal? How are you doing with that one? Um, And so that's what works out well for us. I love that. Very good. You know, what I love to do is I like to surround myself with godly things. And what I mean Mm -hmm. by that is not just in fasting, like you said, Brittany, but also like going to conferences where the word of God is being spoken because God is the only one who can rebirth something inside of you or re, you know, bring something back to your remembrance. And so if you're putting yourself in those places, then God can really work in Mm -hmm. that arena. Yeah. Yeah. Um, For me, I huge on doing to-do lists, which are slash goals for me. So I do daily goals, weekly goals, monthly goals, and the list goes on and on. And so every day I have a plan and um, I always like to create because, you know, it's a, it's a character of God, you know, so I know why, you know, I want to create too. And so I'm always creating strategies, um, game plans, structures um, to fulfill what uh, I need to get accomplished. And so when I'm constantly doing that and I'm constantly writing down because I'm a very visual, I have to see things, you know, then I like to check it off at the end of the night or the next morning. And so it keeps me accountable having that list. So I take that yep. notebook everywhere. Yep. <laughs> so I'm just, okay. as long as I got my list and a structure and a game plan, then I can be consistent for the rest of the year. That's good. very good. I, I love, love that. that. One of the things that I do is I always think about like, how does someone lose sight of a goal or how can someone lose track? And I think about it and I tell myself, Asya, know your why. And if your why isn't people, your why isn't big enough. And I think about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane when he says, God, if possible, let this cup pass from me. Yeah. But nevertheless, your will be done. So yeah. my question to people is, what is your nevertheless? That's what's going to sustain you. That's what's going to give you endurance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So good. Because if your nevertheless is, but my will be done, it's like, yeah. you're not going to. I give up on me. Right. <laughs> you're not going to walk yeah. in that favor of yeah. God. Yeah. But when you know it's when you can look back and say, look at all those women attached to it, if I don't give up, because mm. I think it's the storms and the trials that come. Those are the things we don't equate or we don't mm. add into when we're writing our goals. We don't write in the speed bumps. Right. Yeah. But when you yeah. look at it and say, those are strengthening you, those are okay. giving you the character that you need. Persevere. Come on. Amen. And I want you guys to speak to our viewers for a second because 
you all have something that you can bring to the table and share with them mm -hmm. so that they can have a successful 2018. Mm -hmm. So I want you to tell them one tip on how they're going to be successful in this coming year. Brittany, we'll start with you. So I would definitely say um, laziness. So Proverbs 13, 4 says, the soul that slug is, um, that he desires, but he has nothing. So mm -hmm. meaning um, he wants to pursue these things. He wants to go after these things, but he can't fulfill it because he's not able to do it because he has a spirit of laziness. And so for me, I would encourage all of you guys to just break that spirit of laziness and not mm -hmm. come in agreement with it, not partner with it, because there's so much to do for the kingdom right now. Yeah. And so we all have to be so diligent, put our hands on the net. You know, we're called to be forerunners. And as long as you break that spirit of laziness, as well as obviously many things to do, yes. you know, but mm -hmm. that's definitely one of the key things that sticks out for me is, is breaking laziness in your life. I love that. Amen. So good. Um, so I would say first and foremost, make your relationship with God number one above all else. Don't say that you don't have time for God. Put Him at the beginning mm -hmm. of the day, not just at the end of your day, and really seek that relationship with the Lord, and He'll start to lead you and guide you. Um, the Bible teaches us that the bold, or that the godly are as bold as a lion. So go after your dreams in 2018. Don't be as timid as a mouse. If you want things to happen in your life, God told the Israelites to go and possess the promised land. Yeah. So that's a word for you. Go out and possess the land that God has for you. Possess your dreams and don't give up. Amen. Amen. Mine is a little similar too, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things will be added to you. So it's so important that your number one prayer, my number one prayer to this day is, Lord, let your will be done in my life. Not my will, Lord, but your will be done because he is a good, good father and his thoughts are better than any thoughts that you can have for yourself, any dreams that you could have for yourself. His dreams are bigger. They're better. So focus on him. Focus on his kingdom, the will of God for your life and you will be successful in Amen. 2018. Yes. Yeah. I would say walk in forgiveness. Let's let go. Let this be the year that we let go of the weight of everything that entangles us and just to look to the hills which come at our help and to love like Jesus loved. Mm, love so that. That's good. And I would just say, um, similar to what you were saying about cutting off like laziness and apathy, and I feel like the Lord gave me no more excuses, Ali. Like you have no more excuses mm -hmm. to serve me, to give me everything. Give me everything and stop using excuses for anything less than just serving me. And um, then I thought of Esther 414, that perhaps you have been called for such a time as this. Mm -hmm. And that if you don't step in, if you don't use your voice, if you don't step in in your workplace, in your family, who else will? Mm -hmm. And as Mordecai said to Esther, if you don't speak up, you and your people will perish and relief and deliverance for the Jews will come from another place. Mm -hmm. If you don't speak up, who is waiting on you to step into your destiny, to stop using excuses and to use your voice? Amen. Step in this Amen. year. Amen. Come on, yeah. If you could describe what you are praying 2018 to be in your life using only one word, what word would that be? I would say closer. Um, I want 2018, I want to be closer to God. I want to be closer to my dreams. I want to be closer to my husband, closer to my family. I just want to be closer to everything that God has for me so that I can best be used by Him. Wow. Wow. Good word. Thank Can't you. use two words? <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Because <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> I want to say fearless, but I'm not going to well, say fearless. Well, that's a word. That's I don't know. <laughs> no. Um, actually, the word the Lord has been telling me is limitless. Um, oh, nice. That's great. You know, someone who has struggled with fear for a long time, yeah. you feel very limited. Yeah. And so the Lord's really saying, this is your year to be limitless. You know, he, there's so many scriptures we hear, you know, uh, trust me, um, I'm the God of impossibility, you know. And so I was like, okay, Lord, this is it. Like, everything's all out. Like you said, I'm all in. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm giving you everything, Lord. And um, I just want to be limitless in everything that he's called us to do. You know, we all have such huge calls. And I don't want to prevent anything from uh, me living that out to the fullest. So. I love that. Um, so I'm going to be honest because that's what, kind of confessions is yeah. all about yeah. honesty. I don't have my word yet, but I'm sure that by the time the show airs, I will have my word for <laughs> 2018. Amen. But right now, what I'm really feeling in my heart to say to you all is courage. Mm. Mm. Be courageous in the pursuit of what sets your, your soul on fire. Mm. You know, we need to be courageous Amen. men and women of God that are going after the things of God without looking back, without holding back, without any reservations, just going 
for it mm -hmm. all the way. <laughs> That's awesome. The word that God gave me this year was manifestation. Ooh, and so like in that, that, he showed me a vision of, it's kind of like he planted a seed and it grew and you can only see the beginning of it. And so he's showing me that every seed that I planted, every seed that was watered is going to manifest in this year. So I'm excited for the harvest. Yeah, <laughs> man. You know, Donna, I don't quite know my word yet, but I feel like one thing that I was just thinking of is yes. God, my answer to you is yes. Oh, I love that. Yes. Take it. That's so good. I love that's it. Mine, that's mine too. That's mine too. <laughs> okay, so tell me now, this is another candid moment. What didn't happen in 2017 for you that you want to happen in 2018? You answer you? first. Oh, <laughs> yes. oh, the baby. Oh, yes. Yes. The baby. Yes. 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 That's all I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> mine would be my business. I thought it would be this year, but it's looking like mm -hmm. next year. Amen. Yeah. I would say mine is my book, too, because I'm in the process of writing. Hey. All B words. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Baby funny. business. Honestly, I, I, you know, for me, the good, the bad, I accept it all, right? So whenever something happens, I, I just feel like the Lord orders our steps. So for yeah. me, I don't feel like anything happened in 2017 that I missed out or I could have done. Um, so, so, so yeah, I'm, I'm just excited for 2018 because so it's a special time. Amen. I love that. <laughs> Amen. I, I'm the same way. I feel like God was in this year and he, he covers the mistakes yeah. with his grace and his love and his mercy. And he just says, keep looking forward. Yeah. Amen. That's all. Well, ladies, we're out of time. Thank you so much for being on the panel yes, with me. It was amazing. such an honor to have you guys. You. And thank you at home for watching Faith with Flavor. I pray that this year brings you everything that your heart desires and more. Because when we are seeking the kingdom of God, everything else will fall into place. And I want to leave you with a special word. Hmm. First Corinthians 2 9 says, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. He loves you so much, and there's still so much more ahead. So let go of the past and press on to what God has for you in 2018. I love you, and if this show has blessed you in any way, please let me know at lifewithdonna.com. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.